It's January 22nd, 2012. With 15 seconds left to play in Foxborough, the Ravens are lined up for a 32-yard field goal that can send the AFC Championship game to overtime. This is an easy kick. It's almost a foregone conclusion, really. But it's not just a trip to the Super Bowl on the line here. The reputations of two franchises and their quarterbacks hang in the balance. The arc of football history itself may bend one way or the other based on this kick. But to better understand the stakes of that history, we have to rewind. Hang on, you're thinking. The Belichick Brady Patriots, the ones who already have three Lombardi trophies on the shelf, have a reputation on the line here? Seriously? Strange as it sounds, yeah. After those three championships in four years, the Pats have gone six years without a title, and in five of those years, they didn't even make it to the Super Bowl. As a matter of fact, last week's win over the Broncos was the first playoff victory for New England in nearly four years. After the most recent postseason loss, also in this stadium, against divisional foe the New York Jets, some started to wonder if maybe the Patriot magic was fading. Sure, they were great in the regular season, but why couldn't they close once it was win or go home? If none of this sounds familiar, I should point out that First Take hadn't yet fully embraced debate. Probably a coincidence. Anyways, a lot of that playoff drought has Baltimore's fingerprints all over it. The 08 Patriots went 11-5, but they missed out on the playoffs after losing the tiebreaker to the Ravens. The 09 Patriots got bounced in the wildcard round after a lopsided home loss to the Ravens. And that loss to the Jets? Guess where head coach Rex Ryan spent a decade making his name as a defensive mastermind? Yep. The Ravens. While Baltimore would love to ruin another New England season, they're only playing to stay alive in this game. And that is largely thanks to the Patriot defense, who has forced this situation a couple of times tonight. On three other drives, the Ravens drove inside the Patriot 20. Two of those ended in field goals, which is partially why New England's ahead by three instead of down one. While this hasn't been a lockdown defense all year, it is an opportunistic one. The Patriots are third in the NFL in takeaways, and this heads-up pick by Brandon Spikes in the fourth quarter shows exactly how the New England defense crushes opponents. They stomp out promising drives by jumping on any mistake the offense makes. At the time, that interception probably felt like a real dagger to Joe Flacco. But the score is unchanged, and he's piloted the Ravens back into position to tie things up. All 65 yards of this drive have come from Flacco passes. This is not the norm for Joe in the playoffs. Drafted by the Ravens in 2008 and thrust into the starting role right away, Flacco has proven two things. One, he can rack up wins. Two, sometimes those wins are not really because of his numbers. This was especially true in the playoffs. In his first three seasons, Flacco went 4-3 and three in the postseason. Not shabby at all for a young QB. But his passing lines ranged from meh to maybe the Ravens could just directly snap the ball to a running back. Remember that previous playoff win over the Patriots? Flacco, dealing with a badly bruised hip, went 4 of 10 for 34 yards, and the Ravens ran the ball 52 times. These are the kind of numbers that get you saddled with one of football's most left-handed compliments. Game manager where the great QBs go out and take control of a game through the air, game managers are mostly there to not break anything. Flacco has completely discarded that label today. He's carried the load for the offense, keeping the Ravens on the field, even while their run game has been largely bottled up. In fact, two plays ago, we nearly saw Flacco toss the touchdown that would have demolished New England's Super Bowl hopes. This throw, perfectly placed, perfectly timed, briefly appeared to be the icing on one hell of a comeback cake, the kind of touchdown pass that moves a guy from game manager to elite. Alas, Flacco's gotta wait on the sideline and hope that his night, good as it's been, isn't over yet. His counterpart, Tom Brady, maybe just wants to get this night over with already. If Joe Flacco is maligned as a game manager, Brady is praised as the king of clutch. 
He's 15 and five in the playoffs, and he's a week removed from throwing six touchdowns in an absolute demolition of Denver. Coming off an MVP season in 2010, Brady has become the absolute nucleus of the New England offense. This year, he's hit career highs in pass attempts and passing yards, and the Patriots hit the postseason winners of eight straight. Brady's numbers in that second half were bonkers. 19 passing touchdowns against just two interceptions and three rushing touchdowns just for good measure, which makes his numbers tonight more than a little surprising. He and Flacco have the same number of pass attempts and completions, so this comparison is pretty easy. Joe has been great, and Tom has kinda stunk. The last time Tom Brady didn't throw a touchdown in a playoff game was a decade ago, when he was knocked out of the AFC Championship in his second season. This is not that Brady, who was still adjusting to life as an unexpected starting quarterback on the way to a massive Super Bowl upset. Remember that fourth quarter pick Flacco threw? On the very next play, Brady threw this deep ball into coverage, which Bernard Pollard volleyball set to Jimmy Smith to give the Ravens the ball right back. Yes, Brady did score the touchdown that put New England ahead, a leap from the one-yard line on fourth down. But the battle between Brady and the Baltimore defense has pretty consistently gone to the Ravens. There is no shame in that, considering how dominant this unit has been all year. Here are a bunch of defensive categories that the Ravens rank top three in. My expert opinion is, holy shit! No quarterback threw more than one touchdown in a game against this defense. In eight games, the Ravens didn't even allow 200 yards through the air. And if they haven't completely shut down the Patriots today, they have largely contained them. Five times New England's moved the ball inside the Baltimore 20 and only two of those possessions ended with touchdowns. Those defensive stops and Flacco's excellent play have kept the margin within reach, but it's still a margin, and the Ravens have to erase it right now. Like, right, right now. The play clock is getting perilously low, and Baltimore doesn't have any time. Oh, huh, yes they do. This is where we should stop briefly and look at the last stretch of this Ravens drive. When Flacco found Anquan Bolden for a short third down conversion that Bolden turned into a long game, Baltimore had the ball just outside the New England 20 with 51 seconds left. The next play is where things got hinky. Flacco threw to Bolden again, who got close to a first down before fumbling the ball out of bounds. But the Ravens, as it turned out, thought they'd picked up the first down, because that's what the Gillette Stadium scoreboard said. They thought that near TD was run on first and 10, when it was actually second and one. They thought the play after it, another pass, took place on second down, not third. And once Baltimore realized what down it actually was, they hollered at their kicker to head onto the field, which is why he's still running to his spot with 12 seconds left on the play clock. John Harbaugh could call timeout here, let everybody catch their breath, set up for this kick at a calmer pace, but he doesn't. And I have to assume that's because he thinks a 32-yarder is nothing to Billy Cundiff. Cundiff being on a roster, much less lining up to send a playoff game to overtime, seemed unlikely just a few years ago. After three mostly solid years with the Cowboys, Billy tore his quadriceps on the final practice day of training camp in 2005. And that set him on a long, long path of ping-ponging on and off the rosters of six NFL teams. He landed on the Ravens roster in the middle of the 2009 season, and things began to turn around for Billy in Baltimore. In 2010, he made 26 of 29 field goals, tied the NFL's touchback record, and made it on the Pro Bowl roster. Against the Texans in the divisional round, Cundiff hit from 44 and 48 to preserve slim Baltimore leads. And today, he's done everything the Ravens have asked of him, connecting on both his field goal attempts so far. In fact, he's already made a field goal pretty damn close to the one he's attempting now, a 39-yarder near the end of the third quarter. Getting it down, and the kick hooks through. This is makeable. Send it through, and the Ravens have the chance to rewrite the book on Joe Flacco, game manager, and head to their first Super Bowl since winning it all in 2001. 
miss, and the Belichick-Brady legend gets new life after a stretch of playoff disappointment. Welcome to a moment in history. And the kick, look out! Look out! It's no good! It's no good! Aw oh, man, poor Billy. Thanks for watching this episode of Rewinder. If you'd like to see more kicker hijinks, check out this video on the infamous double doink, or we've got more NFL options for you to enjoy.